Hi everyone, welcome to our week two English science group. Today our topic is galaxy, Milky Way, and planets. Um, so first, here's a scale of how the universe um, compass or the planet solar system, Milky Way local group, galaxy cluster, super cluster, and observable universe. So we are going to look at our solar system now. So there's a planet in our solar system. They are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So you can see that they are all compare like compared to thumb, they are all really small and become far and far away from each other. Um, there's two types of planet in our solar system. One is terrestrial planet, which is the planet that have a lot of rock and mineral in them and have really hard surface like our um, Earth. And the fourth terrestrial planet is Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, which is the first four planets. And the next type of planet is gas giant, which composed of mostly gas. Composed may make out with, so they are make out with the gas and they are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So we are going to talk about each of the planet, the fun fact about them. The first one is Mercury, which is the first um, planet and the one closest to our thumb. And it is the smallest and the second hottest planet in our solar system. It also have a really thin atmospheres. Um, for Venus, it is the hottest planet in solar system, about like the temperature about 462 degrees Celsius. Here is the picture of them. The third planet is our Earth, which is the most dense planet in the solar system. Um, like you can see in the picture, 70% of the Earth is covered by the water. Okay, so the fourth planet is Mars. It's also called the red planet because the red surface of Mars. And it is kind of similar to our thumb, which led to many human mission on them. So we try to now we try to understand more about the Mars and whether there's life on Mars or not. Okay, our next planet is Jupiter. It is the largest planet in our solar system. Um, yeah, like here's the picture of that, the scale of it. It is, um, and there's our 67 moons on around the Jupiter. For our Earth, there are only one, but Jupiter, there is a lot. Um, here's a great red spot over here, and um, it is a storm that have lost over 300 years. The next planet is Saturn. It also called the ringed planet because the ring system around it. It also have a lot of moons. There's 150 moons around it. The last two planets, Uranus, also called the ice giant because the ice mantle uh, surrounding its core. The mantle is composed of water, ammonia, and methane ice. So it is kind of different from other planets. Our next planet is Neptune. It also have the ringy system like the Saturn. And there's also a small dark spot over here and there's a storms. Moving on. Galaxies. First of all, what are galaxies? Uh, so galaxies are basically a collection of stars and other particles that are like all grouped together. and they are grouped together due to gravity. So they all move together. At, uh, they all move together. And yeah, they can vary in size. They're called, they're classified as dwarfs and giants and are usually thousands of light years wide. So even though they're called um, dwarfs, there's, there are still millions of stars in, in them. And giants, ga giant galaxies have trillions of stars. So yeah, they're really big. And each and galaxies are all millions of light years apart from each other. And so types of galaxies, 
there are the elliptical galaxies, which is the shape of an ellipse, and they are some of the biggest galaxies in the universe. There are also spiral galaxies, which look like a pinwheel shape, and uh, and it actually rotates. And there are also irregular galaxies, so there's which means there are, there's no definite shape. And there are like other types of galaxies too. There are interacting galaxies when two galaxies collide, and that could result in them merging together into one big galaxy. And there are starburst galaxies, which are galaxies that form super fast, and this can sometimes lead to a supernova explosion, which is basically a explosion in the universe. And so collections of galaxies. So um, collections of galaxies have different names. A group is a collection of about 50 galaxies. A cluster is a, it can include hundreds or thousands of galaxies. And a supercluster is basically a collection of multiple clusters. So super galaxies are the biggest. Uh, super clusters, sorry. And our galaxy, our galaxy is called the Milky Way. And it has a black hole in the center of the galaxy. Uh, the group that's located in is called the local group. And the cluster that's located in is the Virgo supercluster. And the type of galaxy that the Milky Way is, is a barred spiral galaxy, meaning there's kind of like a bar in the middle of this spiral. And other galaxies, there's the Andromeda galaxy, which is like the closest big galaxy to the Milky Way, and it's also a barred spiral galaxy. And uh, studies have shown that eventually it will collide with the Milky Way, but that's gonna be in like uh, a few million or billions of years. And uh, the Andromeda galaxy is actually fairly close to the Milky Way, it's only a few million light years away, and it can be seen at night without a telescope. And there's also Oak's object, which is a special type of galaxy, it's a ring-shaped galaxy, uh, so yeah. And there's also the Whirlpool Galaxy, which is a, a spiral-shaped galaxy. And moving on to stars. All right, what is a star? So stars are giant spheres of super hot gas made up mostly of hydrogen and helium, which are elements. Um, you don't really need to know that unless you've taken chemistry. And stars get so hot by burning hydrogen into helium in a process called nuclear fission, which is basically when two atoms join to make a bigger atom. And this is what makes them so hot and bright. Our sun is a star. Um, you don't really have to know this. Like I'll be doing this verbally in the next slide, but feel free to pause to read this slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, okay, so stars start out as um, clouds of dust called nubulae, or the first picture, first part of the picture on the right, like the starting um, purple and red part, right? And then it continues to burn and glow for a billions of years. And this time they can be an average star or a massive star, but depending on how much dust they um, formed from. And the star will remain this way between like the gravity would want to shrink the star and heat will want to make it grow bigger and stars will remain this balance until it runs out of hydrogen. And then the red giant, which is the next step is when the hydrogen runs out and the outside of the star expands and it becomes a red giant. And the super red giant is because it's a massive star so it'd be bigger than the normal one. Afterwards, when the core of the star is starting to make iron, it would cause the star to collapse. And an average star will become a white dwarf star, but larger stars like the massive star on the bottom will follow its track to create a huge nuclear explosion called a supernova. And after the supernova, it can become a black hole or a neutron star. So obviously um, the white dwarf on top and the neutron star and black hole. The pictures on the left are nubula, so um, when it's when it just formed or after the explosion of a red giant. Next slide, please. Okay, here's some fun facts about stars. You don't really have to understand all of them. Most of the stars in our universe are red dwarfs. 
Um, they twinkle because of the movement in the Earth's, Earth's atmosphere or the layer outside our Earth. Um, many stars come in pairs called binary stars. So two binary means two. And the smaller they are, the longer they live. And giant stars are brighter, but they tend to burn out fast. So there's pros and cons on both sides. The nearest star to our Earth is a Proxima Centauri. It's 4.2 light years away. And light years means that you would have to travel at the speed of light, which is very fast, for 4.2 years to get there. And our, stun, our sun, which I previously mentioned as a st star, is around 4.5 billion years old. So now we're gonna talk about meteors. So a meteor is a small rock or metallic body in our outer space. And meteors are significantly smaller than asteroids and ranging size from small giants to one meter wide objects. Objects smaller than this are classified as micro meteors or space dust. So now we're going to be talking about types of meteors. So first off, we're going to be talking about the iron meteorites. So these type, which are made completely made out of metal. And on the image on the right, uh, the first one is a picture of iron meteorites. And secondly, we're going to be talking about stony iron meteorites, which have nearly equal amount of metal and silicate crystals and which is a picture second picture on the right the one in the middle and third we're gonna talk about stony meteorites which are which mostly have silicate minerals they are more fragile and lighter so fragile means easily broken or damaged and these are the number three the third picture in the right the bottom one and the weirdest kind of meteorites are the stony iron meteorites. So because they are containing about equal parts of stone and iron. So now we're going to be talking about the oldest recorded meteorites or like one of the first meteorites that was ever include, uh, recorded in our history. So the two of the oldest one were actually falls in Europe are the Alpagan and the Incision. Uh, so one of them is from the 15th centuries and one of them is from the 16th centuries. So they were like discovered by a German uh, uh, physics. So like Ernest Florence Clendy and he was actually the first one to publish this in 19th century, the idea that the meteorites might be rocks that originate not from Earth, but are in our outer space. And the picture on the right, the guy on the top is uh, the scientist. And the, the first one on, towards the left is the Albuquerque meteorites. And the, the second one in the right side is the uh, uh, incision, the second meteorite, uh, which is discovered later in the time. Okay, now we're going to be talking about comets. So first of all, what is comets? So comets, they are frozen leftovers from the formation of the solar system, as we talked about in the beginning of the uh, slideshow. And they were composed of dusk, rock, and ice. And they range from a few miles to tens of miles wide. So they're like really big, but as they orbit close to the sun, and orbit means the curved path of a celestial object. And so this case uh, is orbit around the sun. And uh, they heat up as they, as they spill gases and dust into the glowing head, and they can be larger than a planet. And two famous comets, so first we're going to be talking about the Halley's Comet. The Halley's Comet is a short period comet visible from Earth every 75 to 76 years. So which means if you are lucky enough, you can see it twice in your life. And uh, it will return 2061, so which is about 40 years from now on its regular 76 journey around the sun. And this and 
the first picture on the right is a picture of Zach Common. Um, second one, we're going to talk about the shoemaker Levy 9. So, Common Shoemaker Levy 9 was the comment that broke apart in July 1992. So, it collided with Jupiter in July 1994, which is uh, the image on the second image on the right. As you can see, so it was providing the first direct observation of a collision of a solar system object. And now we're going to be talking about eclipses. So what exactly is an eclipse? So uh, eclipse is an astronomical event. So astronomical it means like some anything like relating to astronomy. And that occurs like when an astronomical object, sorry, is definitely obscured. So obscured means like it's like kind of bland and keeping from like being seen. And so by passing into the shadow of another object, so which means that by our view or the Earth, uh, one object, either a sun or a moon, is blocking each other from like us seeing it. So it's being like one celestial body is like bypassing each other. And we as the viewer will be like seeing uh, something as the picture in the right. Yes. So the sun or like the moon will like fade out uh, slowly, slowly. And we're gonna, lastly, we're gonna be talking about types of eclipses. So there are two types of eclipses. So the first type, which we call solar eclipses, and based on the reward, we can guess that solar eclipse, which means that the we will not be able to visibly see the sun. So the sun will be being eclipsed or being temporarily obscured by the moon. So how this happened is, as you can see on the picture in the right, so as the moon orbiting our path and by turning the Earth into a 23.5 degree angle, uh, at some point of our life, the moon will be like, placed in a straight line of three, so the sun, the moon, and the earth. And as they like shadow it, the sun, so it provides the sunlight onto the moon, but as the moon like absorbs, like um, having the sunlight, so on earth we will be not, we'll not be having like any sunlight at all. So the moon will be like blocking the sun in our view. So a solar system, solar uh, eclipses occurs when a moon gets between the earth and the sun and the moon casts a shadow over the earth as you can see so that means we will not be able to see the sun for a short period of time and the second type of eclipses is the lunar eclipse so uh the lunar eclipse which based on the rule word means that the moon will be blocked blocked by the, the sun's shadow. So lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth's shadow blocks the sun's light, which otherwise reflects on the moon. So which means that since we're getting the sunlight on the Earth, the other side of the Earth reflects a shadow onto the moon, which clocks some portion of the Earth not being able to see the moon. So resulting a view of the observation of the moon being slowly and slowly like covered by the shadow and yeah that's about all that we will be talking about today